um, with the gold for ASU. Um, here's my contact information, and we'll be sharing that later. The ASU charter is very straightforward. It is very different from a lot of schools because we are the largest public university in the country, and our mission is all about education being accessible to students. So in other words, it's not competitive when you apply. There aren't a certain number of spots available. If you hit the admission criteria, you're actually guaranteed admission to the university. And our mission is pretty clear across the board. Um, ASU is a comprehensive public research university measured not by whom it includes, not by whom it excludes, but by whom it includes and how they succeed. Advancing research and discovery of public value and assuming fundamental responsibility for the economic, social, cultural, and overall health of the community it serves. Um, with that in mind, here are the very straightforward admission criteria. I know most of you are going to be incoming first year students, so I'm going to focus on that. Um, but the criteria for admissions are a 3.0 GPA. So if you have a 3.0 GPA unweighted in the core classes, so that's the A through Gs, if you have a 3.0, congratulations, you are automatically admitted to ASU. No SA, no, AC, no ACT, no SAT, <clears throat> no references, nothing like that. So the whole idea is that accessibility and that are going to be true for admissions as well. Um, some degrees do have higher criteria, like half of the business degrees have a 3.6 requirement, that kind of thing. The higher your GPA, the higher your test score, the more money you're going to get in automatic scholarships. So just keep that in mind because it's still incentive to do well, to definitely strive to get a good score on the SAT or ACT if you can take it this year. Um, so make sure that you're still doing as best you can in, those, um, in your classes and everything because it really does matter down the line. Um, I'm not going to mention transfer and all that stuff because I think that we've mostly got first year incoming students, um, but we do have students all across the board from every state. We also have um, representatives, student, student body representatives um, from 160 nations. So we are the most public, we are the most diverse public university um, in the country. So there's a lot going on on campus. And actually, California is our second largest population in the U.S., so there's a lot of students from California coming over. I know personally I had 300 students just from San Diego um, go last year, so you've got a good group going over there. You won't be alone. And then they come back and forth together a lot, and they drive back and forth. And I don't know if any of you have driven out to Phoenix, Arizona, but it is a very boring drive. <laughs> so it's a lot more fun to have your friends in the car with you. That said, we also have the airport right in the center of everything. Um, so we've got the airport right here, and we've got four campuses in the Phoenix area that are very different. So it depends on your major and kind of what you're looking for in terms of a college. If you're looking for a large university with like D1 sports, football stadium, a lot of excitement, a lot of school spirit, a lot of tradition, that kind of thing, you're going to be want to be at the Tempe campus. That one has about 55,000 students, so it's really big. Um, their smallest campus, though, is the West Campus, and that has about 4,500 students. So it's more of a kind of small liberal arts type feel. There's a forensics lab out there. We've got a partnership with the FBI out there. Um, there is a free shuttle bus that runs every 15 minutes to every campus, and um, that goes like until about 1230 at night. So it's really easy to get around. And then if you ever want to go to like a football game on the Tempe campus, I know nothing about sports, but it's a lot of fun to go to the games because there's 66,000 seats in the football stadium and there are fireworks every time we score, that kind of thing. I just cheer when everybody else is cheering. The tickets are all free for students no matter what campus you're at. So you still have the perks of the big school without being at a big school. So it's kind of a nice thing if you're looking for a small school experience. Um, Polytechnic is a more hands-on engineering type campus, and then downtown is more urban, and there's like the medical degrees, lots of business degrees, the journalism programs, they're all out there. And then the average temperature is 75, which is always really nice. Um, we are number one in the U.S. for innovation, six years running. We just beat out MIT and Stanford again. We're very proud of this. Um, we're number four public university in the U.S. for college experience. We're also number five in the U.S. for getting a job after graduation. And that has a lot to do with the fact that you are studying what you're interested in right away. Very different from most schools. You apply to ASU, you get into your program, so like business, whatever your major is, you hit the ground running with classes in your major right away, and then you take those classes for four years. So by the time you graduate, you have a lot of experience in your field. And I'm sure I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to blow through this. But if you are interested in the Honors College, it's like kind of having an elevated academic experience. 
experience, got an extra application process, that kind of thing, definitely look into it if you're um, a student who's very, very focused on your academics and making sure that you're making the most of that. So there's information here about the averages for the incoming class. Scholarship portal, we do give automatic scholarships. I won't get into that too much. And I'm pretty sure I'm out of time, so I'm just gonna end there and feel free to ask questions later. All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mia and I am the admissions counselor for Colorado Mesa University. I am based in San Diego, so kind of close to you guys. I, I'm in North Park um, and Grand Junction, Colorado is where Colorado Mesa University is based. I know a lot of us probably have no idea um, where Grand Junction is. So to kind of acclimate you on the map, you have the state of Colorado, it's a rectangle cut in half by the Rocky Mountains, and we are in the westernmost city of Colorado. So about 30 minutes past the Utah border, and you're going to end up in Grand Junction where Colorado Mesa University is. We are a medium-sized university with about 11,000 students, and the majority of those are bachelor degree seeking students. So we do have some master's programs, we do have some uh, two-year degrees, but for the most part, you're coming for your bachelor's and we're putting all of our focus on you. Um, with that 11,000 student population we have, we do have students from about 35 different countries and 47 different states. I love seeing the growth so much. Um, this is actually where I went to school. I graduated in 2016 with my degree in communications and loved every minute of it. And then full transparency, I think we have about 60 students in a given year coming from Southern California out to Grand Junction. So a small group, but you're definitely not going to be alone. And it's fun to have other Californians on campus with you. Um, this picture that you see here is kind of a great um, showing of kind of what the um, life atmosphere around Grand Junction is like. So we are in a more high desert climate, but with that being said, we have a little bit of everything. So this picture is the Colorado National Monument, and that's about 15 minutes away from campus. It's basically like a mini Grand Canyon. So if you like to bike, hike, camp, rock climb, we have all of that and it's super accessible. If you go 30 minutes in the other direction, however, you end up on the Grand Mesa, which is the largest flat top mountain in the world. And that is where our ski resort is. There's over a thousand natural lakes on it. It's absolutely beautiful. And then 10 minutes in the other direction, you wind up at the Colorado River. So if you like to raft or paddleboard, anything in the water, we have that as well. So um, if you're somebody that likes to be active and have a lot of outdoor recreation near you, really this is one of the best schools that you can consider. Um, with our learning experience on campus, we're all about giving you applied experiences and making sure that we're helping you build your resume and portfolio as a student. Um, we do have 114 majors on campus with the majority being direct entry. Um, nursing, radiology, tech, and teaching are some of the ones that are not direct entry. But with that being said, we're not impacted. So while there is uh, you know, some competitiveness, it's not going to be like what it is in California. So just to highlight a couple of our most popular programs, criminal justice, because we have a fantastic forensic edge. Um, this picture is actually our uh, body farm. So dead humans buried there. Our forensic students get to do research with their bodies, see how they died when they died. Kind of gross, but kind of cool. Uh, we also have a crime scene investigation house. Over here, this is our teaching hotel that opened up on campus this semester. 60 rooms all ran by our students in the hospitality management program and our culinary students run the restaurant. We have a wonderful nursing program as well where the health sciences department is actually a hospital the university purchased and renovated. And then our kinesiology program with all the state of the art technology that they get to use in the human performance lab. So like I said, really big on outdoor recreation in Grand Junction, so many opportunities to take advantage of it. And probably the most important thing to remember is that we are a WUI school. So you as a California resident with a 2.5 GPA or above immediately get discounted tuition of $12,900 per year. You do have that residence hall meal plan cost on top of it for the first two years. Um, but that is you know, your rent, uh, gym membership, Wi-Fi cable, every single meal you could possibly want to eat in a day. So um, a pretty affordable option for looking out of state. Definitely stay in contact. That's my email. I'll put it in the chat as well. 
And then I believe I'm passing it on to my friend, Will. Thank you guys. Awesome, thanks Mia. Um, hi everyone, my name is Will. I'm from the Illinois Institute of Technology and we are located in Chicago, just a few minutes from the immediate downtown core of the city. Looks a little farther away on the screen than it actually is, I promise. It's just about a 10 to 15 minute train ride and you can see that train uh, just to the, to the side of the photo there. So when you hear a school named Illinois Tech, you probably automatically think of computer science and engineering, architecture, and we absolutely have those programs. Those are uh, some of our most popular and strongest areas at the university. Um, the thing that you might not immediately think of though would be something like a behavioral health and wellness or a psychological sciences. Um, that's another skill we have, the ability to kind of bring those traditional humanities-based programs, throw a little bit of tech into the mix, uh, and then give you a slightly different experience than you might get um, studying something very similar at a different institution. We are a smaller size school, just about 3,000 undergraduate students, um, so it's definitely a place where you're going to get to know your professors quite well, you get to know all of the other students, um, and you'll find that it's a pretty diverse community. All 50 U.S. states are represented on campus, um, and more than 80 different countries uh, once you go across the full student body. Um, we do have both master's and PhD level programs in addition to our bachelor's level programs. So if you wanted to come to IIT and start out in mechanical engineering and graduate as a PhD in mechanical engineering, you could do that, absolutely. Um, you'll see some other sort of quick facts about the academic experience. Um, zero impacted majors, like Mia uh, mentioned, we don't have that impaction that you uh, unfortunately have at some of the schools in California you might be looking at. We also have a majority of our classes being pretty small, with 40 students or less, and you are definitely going to have that relationship with the professor. Um, small classes, um, they're also always going to be the academic advisors who help you not just think about what classes you need to take, but what other experiences should I be having during my time as a student to make sure that I'm going to be successful. Some of those experiences uh, you'll see here on this page, uh, things like undergraduate research, um, going off campus and maybe doing a study abroad trip, doing uh, an internship out in the industry. These are all things that we know is very important. Um, and we know that, that we want you to have that hands-on experience. So undergraduate research is supported as early as your first year on campus. Um, you can definitely start to get in the labs and, and start to get some experience. Hopefully by the time you get to third or fourth year, you might be leading your own research projects. Another way that we guarantee our students have hands-on learning experiences is through a program called iPro. It's a year-long problem-solving course that every student takes uh, before they graduate from Illinois Tech. So it's your chance to work in a small group with other students um, to choose a problem of your solving. These could be big real-world um, types of problems or they could be small campus-based uh, approaches. So it's all about what you personally want to do. And then lastly here, you'll see that Elevate program. This is all about getting you off campus and thinking about what else um, could I do to help round out my student experience. So going on a study abroad trip, doing an internship, maybe just taking a short course because you wanna learn all about a specific programming language. Whatever that might be for you, our Elevate program will help you find it. Now, Illinois Tech um, is ranked number one in the state of Illinois for return on investment. When you look at not just your early graduation, but also 20 years into the future, you'll find that we outperform all of the other schools in the state for that financial outcome. Obviously, you're going to learn a lot um, and you'll have a lot of growth and make friends and do all of those great things while you're in college. But um, when you're looking at it from a finances perspective, we do pretty well uh, for our students. You're automatically considered for a scholarship when you apply to Illinois Tech. Those range anywhere between ten to $30,000 dollars in value. And if you're looking for pre-college or summer programs, we also have those. Um, so if you're thinking what you might want to do this summer, hop onto our pre-college website, look at maybe doing an offensive or defensive hacking, doing game development, experience in architecture. All of these range anywhere between one to four weeks in length and would be available for you virtually this summer. And uh, if you have any questions, definitely let me know. But um, we will hand it over now to April at Texas Tech. We'll continue the tech train here. <laughs> Thank you, Will. Hi, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. My name is April Tipton. I serve as one of the lead admissions counselors for Texas Tech University. I'm actually coming to you live from San Diego, so I'm actually based out here. So if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out. Happy to help you out any way I possibly can. 
With that being said, to tell you a little bit about Texas Tech University, we are a big public university. We have over now over 40,322 students to be exact. So we're super excited about that. We're six hours away from Dallas, eight hours away from Houston. We have 78% of our new students that come farther than 300 miles. We're still able to maintain 20 to one student to teacher ratio. Our average SAT score has been 1147 and we are a tier one research university as well. At Texas Tech University, we actually have 10 academic colleges, also including Honors College as well, with over 150 different academic programs. And that's all with undergrad, graduate, pre-law, and medical, all under one campus at Texas Tech University. I also like to note that you are required to live on campus your first year. We have 19 different resident halls. We also have 30 plus dining venues as well with over 550 clubs and organizations. For an example, I had a student start a zombie club, which is now as part of the 550 clubs and organizations at Texas Tech University. We have a beautiful 242 square rec center um, at Texas Tech where you can do rock climbing, yoga, whatever you like to do as well. We also have unlimited sports access because we are part of the Big 12 as well. Literally, all you have to do is swipe your card, it gets you into the game. We do have a 1200 pound victory bell for any events uh, that we win or any anything special occasions. We just keep ringing that bell, which is a lot of fun. We do have Carol of the Lights, which was one of our favorite traditions out at Tech, which they stream over 25,000 lights. And we have about 20,000 attendees that do attend this particular event. I also would like to note that this year we are going to be going for fall 22 class test optional. So I'm very excited to be announcing that as well. Also, with that being said, if you happen or if you're able to take your SAT or ACT scores, um, you will be uh, looking at our presidential scholarships. I also would like to note if you qualify for a $1,000 scholarship from Texas Tech, you will receive the in-state tuition versus the out-of-state tuition. Yes, if you qualify for a $1,000 competitive scholarship from Texas Tech University, that's where you're going to get the in-state versus the out-of-state tuition. As you know, notice here, with this is our presidential scholarship here. So it's going to be based off of your SAT and ACT scores. If your high school doesn't rank, we'll rank for you based off of your SAT and ACT scores and the historical data. You may be asking, what about us uh, students that are going test optional? We do have scholarship opportunities for students, which are the Matador scholarships. Let's say you do apply test optional and then you're able to take the SAT and ACT scores. You can certainly submit those to us as well. As being uh, seniors, you have all the way up until June 1st to submit those for, um, for to be considered for one of those scholarships too. Thank you so much and I do appreciate your time. Thank you, everyone. That was great information. I'm going to ask a few questions. I'm going back to Arizona State University. Um, for your programs that require internships or clinicals, do most students, something like nursing, is all that um, time spent in the clinical setting happening within Phoenix, or do they have to go outside of Phoenix to complete that um, training? They can absolutely stay in Phoenix. Luckily, um, Phoenix is the fifth largest city in the US. So there's a lot going on in Phoenix and we have partnerships with all the hospitals in Phoenix and in the surrounding area to get internships for students. So because like I said, you'll be doing your major for four years, right? So you hit the ground running with classes in your major right away. You have four years of opportunities to get internships and experience under your belt and they make it really easy with the internship team. Great, thank you very much. Um, moving on to, um, I have a question for Colorado Mesa. Um, Number one, Grand Junction is located in a little bit different area. What is transportation like from San Diego to uh, Grand Junction? That's my first question. Awesome, good question. So we have an airport five minutes away from campus. Um, when you fly out of San Diego, you typically have a connecting in Salt Lake or Phoenix, and then you get there. So um, you can definitely get there pretty easily, but um, you typically have the connecting flight. And then if you choose to drive, it's about a 10 or 11 hour drive. Great, but it is beautiful. You. One more question. Um, your programs of uh, criminal justice, and I believe it was exercise science or kinesiology. Does Colorado Mesa also offer the master's degrees for those programs? So we don't for criminal justice, but um, within the kinesiology field, we have an athletic training and Physician's Assistant Master's Program. Great, thank you so much. And 
Let's see, Illinois. Um, two questions. Can you speak a little bit to your study abroad program is your first question. Yeah, absolutely. So um, at Illinois Tech, our largest group of students who go and study abroad is architecture students, um, just because engineers and CS students don't don't tend to take advantage of that at the same high rate as others. Uh, but we definitely encourage that. We try to give very like themed uh, study abroad experiences. So if you wanted to look at the video game industry in Japan, for instance, um, that's something we did two summers ago. Um, so we try to, to give um, very focused uh, types of trips. Great, thank you. And another question, on your one slide, it said 100% taught by professors. Can you please explain the importance of that to our high school students? Yeah, so at Illinois Tech, um, all of our classes are taught directly by professors. And for us, um, you know, we're a, a teaching first um, institution. We really um, want our students to get that one-on-one -on -one time with professors. Um, we don't have large uh, groups of like teaching assistants or grad students who teach the courses. Um, so it's that dedicated one-on-one -on -one time that you get with the professors. Um, even in, in classes that might be a little bit on the larger side, um, you'll still have like small breakout sessions um, or lab sessions that are a little bit closer to that, like 20 students or less ratio. Great, thank you. One final question. Can you tell us a little about, a bit about the weather in Chicago? Yeah, it's all over the place. Um, it's not nearly as consistent as life in San Diego. So um, you'll have a, a nice, beautiful day where you're outside in shorts, and then 24 hours later, you'll have snow. Um, but it, it's kind of cool. You get to experience all four seasons, uh, for sure, um, and sometimes all in the course of a week. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, Texas Tech, can you also please describe your transportation from San Diego? Yes, great question. So I'll fly out of Lindbergh Field and then typically I'll have a layover maybe in Arizona or maybe Dallas Love Field um, or Nevada. Um, and then it takes me right over to Lubbock. And once I land, because Texas Tech does, I mean, sorry, Lubbock does have an international airport, which is 10 miles away from our campus. So it's super easy and fast as well. Okay. And is there a shuttle that runs from the campus to the airport? For the students? They, there is not a great question. So there's like a bus, but there's not particularly like um, a shuttle that's for the students necessarily, but there is a bus system. Okay. And actually, I, that's kind of a question for all of you. Um, public transportation or as part of the students' fees, do they have a public transport um, ID to use or does the school provide one for transportation around town, around for example, Arizona, you already mentioned the different shuttle between the campuses. So if you each could elaborate on that, that'd be great. Thank you. Sure, I'll go first. Um, so we do have that free shuttle bus that gets you from all the campuses. So it goes into downtown Phoenix. Um, there's also a $2 light rail that goes all around the city. And like I said, it's a big city. So that $2 light rail is really nice. And I am originally from New York and I really miss public transportation. Um, that train in Phoenix is actually really clean too, which is different from New York. Um, the other thing is that we do get a significant discount for um, the pass, and it can just be on your student ID. So you can just add that every year to your student ID, and then um, it automatically charges your account every year. And there's also a pretty extensive bus system as well. And the $2 light rail also goes to the airport, and then it's about an hour, hour and 15 minute flight back to San Diego. Thank you. Awesome. And transportation at Colorado Mesa, students do get a free bus pass. Um, they just have to go grab it from the university center when they get onto campus. We also have a free safe rides program over the weekend. And um, there is also a free bus that goes around on a loop from campus to the airport to a big shopping center where we have a grocery store and then downtown. So it does that all day long. So students can get on that anytime. Great, thank you. Um, so at Illinois Tech, um, as I said, we're in, in Chicago on the train line um, and we have a pretty extensive uh, train line and our students do have full access um, to the trains as part of their student ID for the entire semester. That connects to two major airports. Um, so you have no problem uh, getting flights to and from uh, San Diego or really anywhere. Uh, Chicago's got great connections, so. Thank you. Yes, and for Texas Tech, literally all you have to do is show your student ID and we have a bus system because our campus is so large that literally you just have to show your ID and it, it will take you to wherever you need to go around campus as well. Great, thank you. One final question for everybody. Um, can you um, 
explain the importance when you all have said your majors are not impacted compared to California schools. Correct. Do you want me to get into the details of that actually? Just what it, and what it means for Arizona, what it means for each school. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, so we are not impacted at all. Um, we actually guarantee you a spot in each class you need each semester to graduate on time with your major. Fantastic. Thank you. Colorado Mesa, same thing. I mean, you are able to graduate in four years if that's your goal. 88% um, of our classes have less than 40 students in them, so we keep it pretty small over there. Um, and like I said, nursing, teaching, and radiology tech, you do have to do a secondary application, so you're not guaranteed um, acceptance into those programs, but we're not impacted. Thank you. Yeah, and similar, um, I think the important thing to know at Illinois Tech is um, even our engineering and our CS um, and our you know, pre-health programs, those aren't impacted. So you have no trouble getting the classes you need in order to graduate in a timely manner, um, even in those, those STEM-based programs. Thank you. Yes, um, at Texas Tech, our majors, we do have a few majors that are impacted, which would be engineering, business, interior design, and psychology and um, biology. But all of our other majors are not impacted, so they can graduate in four years if they follow the path. Great, thank you. All right, thank you all very much. It was a great session, and um, students that are attending, these will be recorded if you'd like to log into the college. Um, corner and review them again or share them with friends. So again, thank you very much from Scripps Ranch High School Foundation. Thank you to all of our presenters and everyone have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.